The key mechanistic type of reactions of aldehydes and ketones is nucleophilic addition to the carbonyl. The negative charge of a pair of electrons of a nucleophile is attracted to the partial positive charge of the carbon of the carbonyl group. As the nucleophile forms a bond to carbon, the pi pond breaks and those electrons move up to oxygen, creating a negative charge. Primary and secondary amines are among the nucleophiles that add most readily to the carbonyl group. Talking about structures that look like this and this. In each case, the nitrogen has a lone pair of electrons that's unshared that can be used to form a bond with the carbonyl carbon. When there's one alkyl group attached to the nitrogen, we call it a primary amine. And when there are two alkyl groups attached, we call it a secondary amine. It's easy to remember primary and secondary because if there's a single R group, we're going to call it primary. If there are two L groups, we're going to call it secondary. You might be wondering if addition of amines to carbonyl groups are important. Let me show you some interesting examples that probably will persuade you that these are important reactions. The extended pi system of retinal, derived from vitamin A, is the key structural component responsible for the chemistry of vision. It's the extended pi system where we have conjugated double bonds that is responsible for the absorption of light in the visible region. Notice too that this molecule has an aldehyde sticking at the end of this chain. And retinal can't perform its function unless it's bound to a protein. That tie to a protein is through addition of an amino group to the aldehyde to make an imine. So it's the reaction of this primary amine with the aldehyde that forms rhodopsin, which is the key biologically active molecule in vision. One of the forms of vitamin B6, a compound called pyridoxal, also has an aldehyde functionality. And again, it's the addition of a primary amine that has other stuff attached to it that makes this functionality right here that is responsible for the biological chemistry that accounts for inversion of configuration of amino acids, that accounts for decarboxylation, and that accounts for the synthesis of amino acids itself. This is truly important biological chemistry. Beyond this, I can tell you that the addition of primary means and secondary means to aldehydes and ketones is important in organic synthesis. There are many compounds that we need to make that contain nitrogen. And this addition to carbonyl and aldehydes and ketones is a key approach for making these materials. Okay, these reactions are important. Let's look at how they happen. Primary means have a lone pair of electrons on nitrogen. During the initial addition step, this pair of electrons is used to form a bond to carbon, while those pi electrons swing up on oxygen. The resulting initial product has a positive charge on nitrogen and a negative charge on oxygen. Proton transfer away from nitrogen and proton transfer to oxygen has to happen. This will happen in two steps in no particular order. Because these reactions typically are done in an aqueous medium, I'm going to draw H2O here, which can be the base to abstract that proton. And I'm going to draw protonated H2O, which can be the proton donor. A pair of electrons of oxygen is protonated. Well, that pair of electrons stays with water. And over here, a pair of electrons of water removes the proton as this pair of electrons stays with nitrogen. This forms the initial addition product. Notice the structural type. There's a hydroxyl group on the carbon to which the nucleophile is added. In this case, the nucleophile is an amino group. So we have an amino alcohol. Alcohols can be protonated using acid like protonated water. So that pair of electrons receives a proton from aqueous acid. And the water molecule leaves with that pair of electrons. As is the case with regular alcohols, the protonated OH is a very good leaving group. It leaves as water. So we picture the breaking of this bond as that water molecule leaves, which makes a carbocation. That cation looks a little unusual because it has electronegative atom attached to it. But recall that heteroatoms that have a lone pair of electrons can resonance stabilize carbocations. So as this pair of electrons form a bond to the carbon, to relieve that positive charge from carbon, it places the charge on nitrogen, 
And in the new resonance structure, every atom has a filled outer shell. That makes it particularly stable. It makes the carbocation particularly stable. And therefore, the carbocation is particularly easily made. In the formation of the imine, the only thing that's left to do is remove the proton from that intermediate, which happens readily. And there we are, formation of the imine. Several steps in terms of mechanism. In terms of reaction facts, it's simply important to memorize the treatment of an aldehyde or a ketone with a primary amine and mild acid forms imines. The double bond oxygen is replaced with a double bond nitrogen that has an alkyl group attached to it. Secondary amines also add the aldehydes and ketones, but the reaction outcome is different. Let me show you. The initial reaction sequence looks just like it does for a primary amine. A pair of electrons on nitrogen adds to the carbonyl carbon as a pair of pi electrons swing up on oxygen. The initial addition product needs two proton transfers, one to remove this proton with the electron staying on nitrogen here to get rid of that positive charge, and the other one to protonate the oxygen which gets rid of the negative charge, and this acid forms water. With those two rapid steps that transfer protons, we form the initial 1-2 addition product, again an amino alcohol. Like we pictured before, mild aqueous acid can protonate the hydroxyl group, and that protonated hydroxyl group is a good leaving group. It leaves as water. So far, this is the same reaction mechanism we saw when we looked at primary amines. Like before, this amine has a pair of electrons that can stabilize the carbocation through resonance. So this carbocation is readily made, but look at the difference. Now there's no hydrogen attached to this nitrogen, so we can't lose a proton to make the imine. An alternative chemical pathway happens. Again, a water molecule acts as the base, but now it takes a proton from carbon on an adjacent carbon and makes a double bond. This is like dehydration of an alcohol, isn't it? Protonation of the alcohol, loss of water, loss of a proton from the adjacent carbon. We make an alkene. The difference is that this alkene has an amino group attached to it, and so we call it an enamine. And when you're memorizing reaction facts, simply recall that when there are two alkyl groups attached to the nitrogen, that secondary amine with mild acid makes an enamine. And there you have it. Primary and secondary amines readily add to the carbonyl of aldehydes and ketones. Mildly acidic conditions are almost always used. Secondary amines give enamines. And primary amines make imines.